Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. High Octane Anime Action is the name of the game in Relic Knights. Mount up in your mecha and battle for glory at our Relic Knights Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Hi guys, and welcome to this, another painting tutorial for Flames of War. In this one, I'm going to be looking at one of these things. This is a Crusader. I believe this is a Mark III Crusader with a six-pounder uh, gun fitted into it. So one of the later model Crusaders. Um, first thing I want to men mention is the, the color that it's, it's in. Um, this is Crusader Sand, I believe. Yep, so this is Crusader Sand. You look under my palette cam here, it says so. I didn't have the primer of this, so they do a, a rattle can uh, primer spray for it, uh, I believe, but I didn't have that, so I decided instead to build the model, prime it in another army painter colour, which I believe was fur brown, that sort of reddy brown colour, and then airbrushed maybe three or four coats onto it so that we got this completely solid um, base coat. So. This is fine. We're going to be taking it from the point that it would have been had I the, the primer color available. But because I didn't, I had to sort of change things up a little bit and start with something else and then use a bit of airbrush work. For a start, I'm going to be using the Desert Rats um, paint set and um, modifying it slightly or using some other colors uh, from the Army Painter range as well as maybe a pigment powder or two as well. Now, the, the Desert Rats paint set I'm not entirely keen with. Um, it has a lot of good colours in there, but it has a couple of colours that don't really need to be in there. Um, particularly, for example, uh, the shell brass. That really doesn't need to be in there because you're not painting any shell casings. And yeah, you're, you're not unless you're doing some of the artillery pieces and stuff. But that's fine. Uh, there would be a colour I would change out for that, which would be Panzer Grey or even a black would be quite good. Now, the first thing I want to do on the tank is uh, get some camouflage down. And for that, I'm going to be using Firefly Green. Now, this is slightly different to one of the other colors that's in the German set called Africa Green. This is a bit more of a vibrancy change. This is a, a bit darker, a bit heavier uh, than the German one. Um, so we're going to be trying this out and getting some camouflage. Now, you can see here that the bottle is sort of putting out a little bit of fluid rather than just straight paint, that's all right. That's because when these bottles are new, there's generally a little bit of clear medium at the top of the bottle. So just get rid of that first and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna start on the camouflage and use a hobby highlighting brush to apply that. So as you can see, I have my wet palette here all settled and sorted out. And the first thing I wanna do is tackle the side, so along the bottom here, because the British schemes are a little bit different to the German ones. The German ones, they love their stripes, their large blotches and stuff like that. The British tend to run uh, something a little bit different, and I'll, I'll show you this now as I start to apply it. So from the back here, what we want to do is make a sort of wavy, uneven, wavy line. all the way across. And this is what um, a lot of people would call counter shading. You put a darker color to the bottom or a lighter color to the bottom and change the color up for the rest of the vehicle. This is an unusual one and I guess it's to break up the, the line between the, the, sand, the sand guards or the dust guards and the wheels sort of confuse that line up a little bit. Now this is probably going to take about two coats so I'm just going to get stuck in and I'm going to make that line a little less sharp there. The reason I'm doing the camouflage first is because the next colour is going to be for the tyres and there's a spare tyre up on the turret that uh, we'll need to make nice and neat so I don't really want to have to try and bring this up uh, close to that wheel in any form or fashion and need to tidy it up again later so the, there is method behind the the color choice. They do carry up stripes a little bit, so we're going to take a line 
and run it up the side of the vehicle. And uh, just over the top of the storage bin up here, like so. Now that will then, if I take the turret away, if the turret will come off, it should come off. There we go. I can then carry this line up across the top of the hull, just to where it meets the turret ring. And we'll just fill that in. Maybe you just need to thin the paint a little bit more. Let's do the rest of the hull first and then we can move on uh, to the, the turret. So let's look at the front. So the front is basically going to have a sort of a splotch on it. And that's going to run sort of across this area here, then down, and then it will run down over this hatch where the machine gun turret used to be. And then it'll run off by the front. In fact, it'll run a bit broader than that. And run right down like so. And the point of practicing, well, I would say if you're looking at camouflage patterns, get plenty of reference material on them because every nation uh, had different styles of camouflage, even if they were using exactly the same colors as someone else. The style, the approach to the camouflage was different. That's why you'll find in the, the Bovington Museum, they have that Matilda that has that glorious sort of three-tone, very sharp line, almost like a battleship dazzle pattern onto it. Um, which is a very unique approach to desert camouflage, but apparently very effective, uh, especially when it was hiding in amongst, you know, hiding at, or moving at distance from enemy positions. Uh, when you were looking for it, it was sort of hidden in the haze, the heat haze on the horizon. And it, it hid that very effectively. Not quite as cool as a stealth cloak or anything, but it, uh, it was effective. Thin that paint up a bit more. And like I said, this will need a couple of coats. So I'm just, just take your time and get the shape right first. Now at the back, it's going to be a bit of a pain because what we're going to do is start a splotch up here. And run it. Sort of that way. And then in and down. Bring it back out and then give it a, a slant off to one side. Something like that. Now it's going to cross over this fuel tank here at the back as well. So it needs to come up and over like so. And then if we go to the back of the vehicle, it's going to follow that line a bit. While this one comes down here, we're going to make it start to swoop in and across and down the back of the vehicle. Roughly there. And this one will join back here and follow that engine grill. And go right down. Sort of spread itself out there. So I'll move on to the turret now. And the thing, the trick with this is to place the turret on facing front. 
and then we can match up all the uh, the pattern that we've done so far. Now you can see that the one on the front is starting to cross underneath the turret so we can just carry that one up and maybe over the top a little bit. And then bring it right back down again to meet here. And we'll just fill it in that encompasses the gun mandala or the gun mounting area. Now the turret is the most awkward shaped turret in the world. So what I'm going to do is find a point there where the this line will be following up and then we're going to bring this up, bring it under the spare wheel up onto the, tar the top of the turret sweep it back and what it will do <clears throat> is it will come off the back of the turret like that onto the stowage bin swing itself around the pioneer tool or the shovel back up and join underneath the spare wheel about there So what we do then is we fill all this area in, get our first coat down on it at least. I mean, you can see the the idea behind it is that they were trying to make big sweeping curves on a vehicle that has a lot of sharp edges and lines, and they've tried to do as much as possible to break that up. So when you look at it from the front, it's trying to disrupt some of the horizontal lines with a bit more vertical and stuff like that. So I mean, I, I get the idea. I really am not totally taken on the effectiveness of tank camouflage unless you're stationary or hull down or something like that. You know, you're giving the tank the best chance to blend into its surroundings as long as it's stationary. Okay, now that the uh, camouflage has its second layer, it's looking a lot more solid and a lot more in the condition that I want it to be. So the next step I want to do is um, color in some of the, or block out some of the other colors. The first one I want to do is the tires. And for that, I'm dipping into the Africa Gore paint set for Panzer Grey, which uh, is actually quite a nice color for the tires once you start adding weathering and stuff like that to it. So let's get some of that out onto the palette. And let's see what brush do we want to use. That doesn't really matter so much. Let's just use um, our hobby highlighting brush. And let's start with the spare wheel on the top here. And you want to make sure the paint isn't filling these little holes on the, the wheel itself. So I think I'll put an initial layer down. And then sort of dab the tip of the brush in just to remove some of the paint from inside those areas. Now again I'm doing the wheels before I do the tracks because the tracks will have to be a different colour and it's easier to make a mess on the tracks and then tidy them up than it is the other way around. Okay, <clears throat> so I think that'll do for the tires. Um, I would hit the front idler wheel as well, but I'm not too concerned on that. I think it's mostly going to be hidden by some weathering later on. And let's have a look at what else we could add here while we're waiting for the, the wheels to dry. Um, we have the exhaust system on the back we could possibly do. So I'm looking at what colors I would have for that offhand here. Um, I may actually see what's behind me. So let's have a look. Uh, leather brown. Leather brown will do rather nice. Yeah, leather brown. So here we go, leather brown. This is a new pot, so I'm going to have to make sure I have the medium out of the neck of the bottle first. So, or not, it seems fine. That's good. Even better. And on the back here, we have 
the exhaust system that comes out from this housing here. and runs into the back of this box like so okay on the other side Right, let's just catch in the rest of the now these tracks unlike the tigers have a lot more surface area on them so the dry brush is going to be very apparent once we get to highlighting these up a bit so I'd say once this is dry before we do any other weathering we'll put um, the shade down and see how that looks afterwards. Again, leaving the machine gun to last because it would still be quite clean regardless. It'd be a little dusty, but it would be clean. Okay, and there's also a shovel there on the back. I'm just going to touch it with Comrade Khaki as well. Okay, like that. Then clean the brush off and we'll uh, get some, let me see here, some Panzer Grey, I think, again. Just grab that quickly. And just do the, the shovel blade as well. Okay, at this point, I'm going to let everything settle, I'm going to let all the track dry and everything. Uh, I'll give it a few minutes. And I think when we come back, I'm potentially, yeah, I think I'm going to do some dry brushing perhaps. And uh, yeah, so we'll see where that goes in the next step. Um, from here, I'm going to be doing a dry brush. And that dry brush is going to consist of the Crusader sand that we put into the palette earlier. So I'm going to take that and you'll see up here just remove a lot of that paint from the brush. Now the idea for this is to fade the camouflage a bit and make it look like it's scraped down to the, the bare, the, the undercoat, which will be the, the sand colour. Uh, after that, it will then be on to a wash and the wash is what will really make this model pop. So let's get in with the dry brush first here. Let's start at the top of the turret. And this will do what I like to call breaking the camouflage. So where the camouflage is designed to break the edges and break the shape of something, the dry brush is what's going to bring that back in and will allow us to have that shape visible again. And then the wash will help shade everything, all the details, and then after that, there will be another dry brush. So all this is doing really is helping to A, highlight and B, accent the shape of the vehicle again. Okay, now let's get on to a wash. So clean my brush off here. Should be all good. Now, let me see. The wash that's in the, the British paint set is ironically, just as ironic as the German paint set, called Rommel Shade. So let's 
get that onto the palette. And we give the whole vehicle a good coat of this. And I finally get to use the larger brush, which is my regimen brush. Okay, let's start on the top of the hull here and let's test how much we have. That'll do, so then we start spreading that out. You can see just how nice and subtle that wash sits in around the rivets and stuff like that. You want to try and let the wash do that rather than force it in and start pulling it away from areas you you want it to be. But yeah, you start moving it away to other places and then it starts messing up. Here, and let's gingerly put the turret back on. All right, at this stage, I'm going to let it dry. I'm probably going to take a hair dryer to it just to speed the whole process up a little bit. <clears throat> when we come back, we'll look at the next couple of dry brush steps. We're now ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be another dry brush. This time, however, we're going to be going for a skeleton bone dry brush. So let's apply that because we've already faded the paint a little bit with the Crusader sand dry brush. This one is now going to be adding a very stark highlight as well as a bit of a dusty uh, texture to it. So and what we're looking at this dry brush to do is basically just highlight all the, the details on the top of the vehicle. I have to admit this is a lovely shape of a tank. It's just a shame that the armor was absolutely rubbish against pretty much everything they were fighting against. Because it is quite a, a nice looking vehicle. Okay, so that'll be enough for doing a spot of extra highlighting on the vehicle on the top at least. Onto the wheels and the tracks. It's a much heavier dry brush. And what we can do is carry that up onto the sand channels, just the bottom area of the sand channels a bit. Okay. That looks nicely highlighted and a little more dusty than it was previously once the wash had been put down. Now the track um, when you, if you've watched the Tiger one, started um, gun metal and then worked its way up. I'm not so keen on that approach now, so I'm going to go straight to uh, plate mail. It takes out a step that I think maybe is just hidden too much, and because this track is largely um, ground pad, it's going to be mostly that anyway. So doing a, a duller dry brush before everything else doesn't really make the same sort of sense. Yeah, see that brings that up a lot quicker. Um, let's try a little bit on the edges. Right up to the side there. And that brings us up to a really bright looking used track. So I think at this point I'm ready to apply some pigment powder. Now again, I'm going to be using the same one that I used in the Tiger, which is this sort of Basecraft Desert Dust. Dab some out. Oops, okay, well, we'll shift that over. I dip the dry brush into some water. And we'll make a very thin pigment wash without using anti-shine varnish this time. 
it's a bit over out of the way there, but it's it's there. Okay, let's go for it. So keep the brush nice and wet, which lets that pigment move around freely. And lets it all gather up in areas where dust would naturally accumulate. So this should give a slightly different effect than what it did on the tiger. What we can do is just keep adding water to continue moving this stuff about. Pull it away from areas that we don't want to and move it towards the areas that we do. All right, but you can already see, especially in the front, where the pigment's starting to gather and dry up. And that's going to look quite effective, I think. Onto the turret. So get rid of that again. I'm just going to mix up some more of the wash. And onto the top of the turret we go with this. Basically just let it settle wherever it wants. Again, we have a little bit of drying time, so I'm going to turn the cameras off, whip out the hair dryer, and I think it'll take maybe about 10 minutes or so for this to settle, and then we can see what effect we've got. Now that I've left the pigment to dry uh, with the assistance of a hair dryer, you can see what it's doing is just sort of gathering a little bit. It's quite subtle. Um, it's maybe just a little bit too subtle in places, but that's okay. I don't mind so much. We still want this vehicle to look used and you know, still weathered, but I think slightly different than the German one, which had a lot more pigment powder to it. So what I'm going to do now is start to add some chipping to it. Now on the German vehicle, we used Panzer Grey because that would have been the underlying coat, as I explained in the video anyway. Um, with this stuff, again, I'm not sure. It may have turned out of the factory green, um, but either way, I'm not so concerned. What I'm going to go for this time, though, is... Uh, an oak brown for the base of the chipping, so a very dark brown. And up here, I'll show you what I'm after. And it's maybe not as heavy as that, but something a bit more like that. Okay, so we want to target places of interest. So let's just take the turret off again. Make sure I've got a bit more paint off the brush than that, or off the sponge. And we want to just dab little bits onto the vehicle like so. Just take it down onto the sand channels a bit. And I want this vehicle to look more heavily worn uh, than the Tiger, so just to say that it's been in service a lot longer. So that'll probably do for the, the paint chipping. It's a little bit heavy in places, but eh, we can work with that. Now, the next thing I need to do is find, um, there we go, my gun metal. And what I want to do with this one is the exact same that I've just done is actually chip it. And I'm going to make my sponge head a little bit narrower this time. And that'll help, that helps kill the brown a little bit. It leaves a bit more bare metal. As I said, in the, the climactic conditions in the desert would mean that the vehicles look a bit more sandblasted. So there would be a touch of rust, but most of the time the paint will actually wear down to the bare metal. So a couple more things I want to do. I want to start off with the, the tracks again. So I'm going back to my plate mail, which I still have some clean plate mail lying in here. I'm just going to grab that with the Kalinsky brush. 
and we're just going to touch the actual track pads the outermost layer of the track as a highlight layer just to really make those things pop just a little bit more and that really brings up the bare metal look and that's exactly what I like I look for The next thing is to get some, let me see here, where is it? There it is. Uh, Army Painter Dark Tone, which is the black wash. And we're going to use this for a couple of things. First up, we're going to use it to blacken the end of the gun barrel because we didn't drill it. Um, there's not a lot of vision slots and stuff that are visible on the tank, so there's, there's a periscope up there could maybe do with something. Just to pick it out there and there just to make those a bit more apparent too and round onto the back we have the exhausts which are these slots on the back here so just maybe just coat that whole area in the dark wash like so and same again on this side like that so guys thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed it if you've learned something please let me know in the comments if you haven't learned something put it in the comments uh, i'd like to hear from you anyway and let me know what you're doing if you are painting any of this stuff and following along let me see what results you've come up with too and if you've changed anything let me know so guys listen, until next time i'll see you soon go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.